Hi, and welcome back to Dirtbag uh, Baseball Talk, everybody. Um, as you know, we're talking about uh, true athletic or true athletic, sorry, uh, protective batting gloves. And last time uh, we had uh, Derek Hurley, one part of the uh, team of uh, at True Athletic, on with us and, and talking about the concept and, and a little bit of the idea. And uh, we spoke about the doctor that he met, uh, Mark uh, Jalia. And so this week, obviously, it makes sense that we go ahead and, and we're happy to have on with us, uh, Mark. And, and we're going to be talking and digging a little bit deeper about some of the things that went into this protective batting glove to come up with the final uh, product and stuff. And, and I'm showing you quick, but I'll show you through the episode as well. And, and Mark's who better to have than a hand specialist in this partnership. And, and, and that's why it's so important for us to get him on with us and, and talking to all of you out there watching this. So you really feel like you're a part of, well, one, you have the knowledge of what uh, true uh, batting gloves are, but you almost feel like a part of the family and that's big to all of us here. And, that, and so we're really big on that. And on that, I'm not going to go anymore. Uh, Mark, great to have you with us. Thank you for being on with us. Hey, Kirk, I really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Uh giving us the opportunity to kind of bring our technology to uh, a product in baseball that, that most all hitters use, uh, but hasn't seen much of an evolution in the, in the 7,500 years of baseball. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable, isn't it? When you stop and think about it, uh, we we've seen batting gloves for so long that it, it just, it just becomes a part of the fabric, but we don't really appreciate what what a batting glove should be capable of actually doing instead of just something that hangs onto the bat or looks pretty you know there's so much more and, and that's what you've done here so you know i'm not just sure where you want to start mark but uh definitely um maybe sharing your experience as as the hand doctor and and you know just those common injuries that you've seen over the years of baseball and like you said why you felt that it was such a great fit when derek and you were talking and you said you know what let's dive into this Let's go down this rabbit hole in this journey. So I think that's a great spot uh, to start is at the beginning. Um, and I'll take it all the way to the very beginning. When, when I was a, a hand fellow training in hand anatomy and hand surgery and, and, and dedicating my career to taking care of patients' hands, uh, the surgeon who I trained with, uh, Dr. Charlie Malone uh, in New York, was an innovator in hand protection for boxers. And he developed a glove uh, that was revolutionary uh, to protect uh, pro boxers, as well as amateur and college boxers, um, their hands. And it kind of set the seed in the back of my mind uh, about hand protection and developing a product for that. As the years went on and I, I went into private practice and got involved with a lot of athletes uh, from young youth leagues to the majors, uh, we started to see kind of a grouping of injuries that we would see in the hand specifically. Uh, and I, I kind of always broke it up in, into either osseous or bony injuries and, and the classic fractures and different things. And then there's soft tissue injuries, ligament injuries, um, tendonitis and strains. So through meeting different people and all of a sudden maybe the stars aligned and uh, Derek and I had the fortunate opportunity of crossing paths uh, and the time was right. And uh, I, I kind of approached Derek and, and a couple other people and said, you know what, let's, let's delve into this and work to protect baseball players' hands. Um, and Sometimes people say, let's go into business to, to make a bunch of money. Uh, and my goal was actually to put myself out of business. In other words, I didn't ever want to see another baseball player coming in with a hand injury if they were able to wear this glove and protect kind of the crucial areas of the hand. Um, so just looking at the hand, the top of the hand is notorious for getting hit with wild pitches, high end you know, high inside pitches, the chin music is going to come in and, and instinctively a lot of players pull back and it gets smacked right on the top of the hand and they end up with what's called a metacarpal fracture, which is a fracture of one of the long bones of the hand. The next big bone injury uh, that we know about is the hamate, which is the, the, the bone right in the kind of the, the palmer area of the hand, more in line with the small and ring finger. And that's just from the knob of the bat a lot of times hitting it. 
younger players get that kind of stinger because they're not holding on to it properly. And in the Pee Wee and Pony Leagues, you hear about that. Um, and then from a soft tissue standpoint, there are some major stabilizing ligaments of the wrist that kind of hold the major bones together. And we developed that dorsal strap or the cross strap that kind of goes around the top to really stabilize that. There's a couple of pro players that had just an amazing turnover when they came through in their swing, but they were straining and tearing those ligaments. Um, so that's what we kind of sought to remedy all in a, all in one package. Um, and that, and that's, that was the, the business plan or the goal or the, or, or the medical challenge that we sought out with um, developing this glove. Yeah, no, and, and I'm glad <laughs> I'm loving it because I'm wearing it right here, everybody. And that's right. A uh, little bit of what Dr. Uh, Mark was talking about. Uh, you know, I'm happy to go through with you, Mark, even, you know, there's your standard batting glove where you just strap it on and that, but again, there's that back protection, that back plate that I talked about right on the back of the hand. It slides in there really nice. I know talking to Derek, um, the next generation of these gloves, it's automatically going to be sewn in so you don't have to even slide them in. It's already there when you get them and it's up and rolling. And then, yeah, that back strap that Mark talked about to, for extra support around those wrist ligaments, you know what? There it is. It just wraps right around. It's as, it's as easy and seamless, just like that. And, and, and man, you're in there. <laughs> you're locked in there it's like a pair of boxing gloves it, it, and it and it has that and that that cross strap along the top and you know, I, I don't know if it's superstition or just habit you see a lot of the you know the pro players they they take a swing and then they step out of the box and, and, and they're they're undoing it and redoing the velcro on the gloves and maybe there's a superstition and just habit with it but a lot of times that you know these guys are swinging hard and the gloves are slipping you know and it's just they, they, I want the players to have the best grip on the, on the bat and not worry about it slipping out of their hand or having the glove slipping on their hand. Maybe the glove is really grippy on the bat, but their hand is not grippy in the glove. So that strap just, like you said, it locks it on your hand and your wrist. So kind of dual function, it, it's really stabilizing for the ligaments, but it also keeps the glove where it needs to be for the swing. Yeah, and absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because... You know, I, I was talking with you guys, but also just so people know, there's that that handmade protection that Mark talked about. And and naturally, when I put these on that bat now, I'm, I'm holding it like that for everybody to see. It slides into my fingers. It just automatically feels it feels so comfortable and so right. But that's where you want it. You want it in your fingers. You don't want to be palming the bat like a lot of the young right. kids do because they right. don't understand it. Right. So you're, you're actually not only a hand protection glove, you're, you're a player development, a player enhancement glove as well. Well, thanks. Thanks. I'll take yeah. that title as well. Thanks. Yeah, you really are. But, but that's what Mark was talking about. A little bit of protection there. I notice on these ones, Mark, you've even got some on the top of the thumb. Is that something I, I have to assume that's another injury you see quite often coming into your uh, office? It is. It, it, it's a hit on the dorsal ligament of the thumb there, as well as the, the, the collateral ligament on the side. Um, and it's just kind of an area that gets kind of sore. There's uh, kind of an aftermarket product. You see some of the players with a, a little donut kind of wrapped around just their thumb. Um, this kind of takes the place of that in the evolution of this glove. And that's kind of what we've, we, we've done. We've never stopped innovating in this glove. And it's not like I'm trying to make it a Swiss army knife where it just does everything, but we want it to address some of the major issues that we constantly see. Uh, in the in the in the versions that we're working on now with our designers, uh, we're actually enlarging that pad a little bit and extending it down the length of the thumb, and that's kind of what I want to touch on a little bit. It's just kind of the how the glove became what it is today, uh, because I think we went. I'd have to go back and look through all of our notes, but I want to say there was about fifteen to twenty prototypes. Okay, and we, I think. I know hand anatomy, I know hand surgery, I know injuries, I know patterns of injuries. I don't know the first thing about making a glove um, or testing it. You know, I'm a surgeon, I'm a doctor, I'm, I'm, I'm an expert at that. So the one thing I've always learned is to 
seek out the best people and, and make a team. Uh, every, every baseball team has, has the experts and the individuals. You, you've got hitting coaches, you've got pitching coaches, uh, you know, you've got your designated hitters and your run. So everybody's got their, their role. So that's what we really focused on when we set out to do this is I didn't want to try to do something that I didn't know what to do. So fortunately, uh, a Tony nominated uh, designer uh, who is in New York uh, graciously came on to our team because uh, she's very well known and very well respected in her industry. So for her to kind of take on a new project of this with, with a hand surgeon who doesn't really know much about designing, I was very grateful. But she worked tirelessly uh, to come up with a lot of the design elements to solve the problems I was presenting to her, saying, listen, we need to develop padding in this area of the glove, but I don't want the players to know there's padding. I want protection here, but for the players to not feel like they've got a, a boxing glove on their hand and to make it feel like a regular batting glove that's very, very comfortable. And she's, she's from MIT. She's taught at MIT. She, she's a, a material guru of knowing what type of materials to put where and how to integrate them. So she was instrumental. And in, even to this day, we, I mean, we're always corresponding daily as this evolves. But once we had our product, now we had to make sure that it did what we wanted it to do. So that's when we, we worked with UCLA and their impact labs. And uh, Dr. Larry Carlson out at UCLA, uh, who, who, who is just a genius when it comes to, to analyzing the materials for their impact protection capabilities. And it was a year and a half at UCLA uh, in the labs with, with air cannons and, and slow, you know, high speed film reviewing it to make sure that what we were claiming and what we were seeking out to do would do that. So. That's where I really pride myself on the development of this glove was seeking out the best people in the industry to come together to make a product that the players and parents of younger players will feel confident that their hand is protected because you get injured, you, you know, you kiss a couple of weeks or a couple of months goodbye of the season. And uh, that can either translate into, you know, lost scholarships or, or lost looks for the draft or, or lost phone calls to the, to the big show or, you know, going back down to the minors if you're up, if you're up in a pro guys and uh, you're on injury reserve for, for the rest of the season or, or, or just out of it at that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm great. I'm glad you touched on that because I think that's vital to all you out there and, and wanting to understand more about why you should be in these gloves. Um, I know when I first got them, I'll be honest, they, they feel cumbersome to, to the packaging, even though it's beautiful and everything else. It seems like, because it is different than what we're used to. And I'm telling you what, you put them on and it's exactly like Mark said, the, the engineering of it is, is amazing. It's, it's, becomes a batting glove for you and, and you feel stabilized, you feel confident. And, and that's, I can't put a price on that enough. Um, and that's why this is on here. This is why we're, we're in there trying to educate and empower you again, like we always do with, with teams like Mark and the guys at Truelatic or anybody else that we go with. And, and it's so vital to us that it has to be a game changer if you want to call it that. And I think, Mark, you touched on it kind of open-ending, two weeks, four weeks. Let's, let's kind of, not to scare people, but really kind of validate why these gloves should be, if you're going to be in the batting glove world and you want to wear them and look pretty or whatever and stuff like that, which most players out there, let's change your thinking. Let's still look pretty, but let's understand why, if you can put protection on your hand, true validated data-proven protection, you should be doing it. So when you see those at amateur levels, or is there a is there a difference, Mark, between the length of the injury and recovery between amateur and high school, college, pro, or is it a pretty standard recovery time? So it's kind of a two sided question. Uh, I, I've always been really conservative with with some of the younger players I see that are in high school, uh, you know, and they get injured 
and they're not being paid millions of dollars to be out on the field where they, they may, might be playing injured. I mean, I, I think we can all remember the World Series seeing a certain player having duct tape wrapped around his finger because he's got a love for the game. He's going to play hurt, you know, and, uh, and he's, he's got to be out there. Um, but some of these younger guys that, you know, they have their whole life and the potential to, to miss out on being a pro player or a college player uh, because of an, uh, of an injury sustained that didn't heal well, uh, that's a little bit more diff different. So, uh, listen, bones heal at the same rate. I mean, the, the body's glue that heals the bone together, it's like going to Home Depot and buying glue that says time to dry, six weeks. There's, there's nothing that we can do to change that. So, you know, the bone is going to take all the, let's just take a simple metacarpal fracture in the, in the middle of the hand. I mean, that's probably one of the more common injuries that uh, we see. Um, that's a six week, it's a six week. And then, you know, maybe a, a, a few weeks of therapy or rehab um, and then they're back at it. And then there's maybe some, uh, some of the, the long-term component of just, Hey, I might not stand inside as much. I don't want to get beamed again. So now you kind of take that into consideration and it's going to change the way maybe somebody stands in the box or worries about taking the pitch. So there's a lot that goes into how long somebody might be out for an injury, but listen, bones take six weeks. And I can tell you this, I tell patients it's better to break a bone than to sprain or tear a ligament because those take, a lot longer than a bone to recover and heal from. And some of them, you're never going to get back to normal. Now, the hamate fractures are always an interesting one because uh, there's uh, a lot of not, or, or I should say there's not a lot of data and research about, um, you know, time to recover. Uh, but patients do complain and, uh, and players do complain a lot about kind of a persistent pain in that area, uh, even after they've had surgery. Because uh, it, it's a notorious area for forming some scar tissue. It's not well vascularized. So there is some um, thickened scar that tends to form. And that's right at the knob of the bat. And uh, that, that, that's not too great. So we, we've had a couple of players that have reached out to us that have had hamate fractures, have had surgery, and they just don't feel comfortable holding the bat. So they, they, they've thrown these on and, and they're happy. So uh, even for the guys that may have already been injured, and don't want to worry about a re-injury to an area, this is a great solution to, to kind of protect them going forward as well. Yeah, that makes complete sense uh, when you say it that way, Mark. Absolutely, there is the physical recovery time, but there's 100% the mental. And, and you're right, you can't put timelines on. As soon as you said that, a whole bunch of times that he had injuries of one way, shape, or form or another, and you're right. Every player then heals, adapts, recovers differently. So you're right. Um, that's a no brainer for me, dirtbags. It, it's, it's again, you know, we don't have anybody on if we don't believe in them totally, we wouldn't do it to you. All this is, is about building trust, undeniable trust with ourselves and everybody that we partner or team with, or, or kind of collaborate with. And it's so vital to us. So, you know, Again, do what you want to do at the end of the day, but you've got the knowledge now. You've got the education. You've got the power to move your baseball or softball journeys forward in the right direction with confidence, again, both mentally and physically, which, which really is emotionally as well, because there's that component that's always tied into everything. And you know what? It's, it's a no-brainer. It really is a no brainer. Why would you not take something that has been tested for four years? What did you say, Mark? 15 to 20 prototypes. Yeah. It wasn't and, just throwing together material. Um, no. And Emmy and award winning designer. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the interesting thing is the evolution of those prototypes came from players. So we'd have 10 or 15 or 20 of them made. Uh, we had some connections at some different pro hitting camps and, and we, you know, there's a couple New York Yankees and uh, Arizona Diamondback players and, and some Chicago Cubs that, that tried them for us. Some of our friends and, and, and some retired guys from, from the, the majors that, that threw the gloves on and said, hey, 
tweak this a little bit, make this tighter, make this shorter. This feels good. This doesn't feel good. That's how all the prototypes kept evolving and evolving until, until we had enough people saying, you know what, this, this is good, man. Let, let, this is, you, it's perfect. You know, I, nothing is ever perfect because I always want to make it better. Uh, but sometimes you say, hey, this is, this is, this is what it, this is what it is. And I love it. Um, the one thing I want to touch on that we kind of maybe kind of just glanced over was that the plate that you held up. Yep. Um, that's, that's a real interesting piece of plastic. And, and, and it's crazy. I just say a piece of plastic, but it, it's, it's Kydex, which is a, it's a type of plastic that will mold to the hand over time with heat. So you get this kind of custom fit to it. Um, and the energy absorption from that plate is, is, is spectacular. And for the pro levels and, and these speeds, you know, in the nineties and above, that's what, you, you know, that's what you need to have. Uh, the, the gel technology inside the glove uh, protects a lot of the soft tissue and, and speeds uh, lower than that. Um, so that's, that was a real innovative component combining the two products uh, or two materials. And once again, this goes back to, to my designer, Andrea and, and Larry, uh, who, who said, listen, this is the combination that's going to give the glove the best component. And, you know, I, I'm glad what you said with, you know, you, you know, dirt bag working with people that they trust. Listen, this is, this is my passion of, of, of taking care of people's hands and protecting their hands. So I had to trust the people that were the experts to come back to me and say, Hey, this is the material. This is what we need to do. Let's go forward with this. So it's, I love the team approach and just working with really good, good people that have the same passion, same mission to come together to, to, to bring something to baseball that hasn't been worked on in, in, in countless years, you know? Yeah. So there you go, dirt bags. There's, there's, it's not just a batting glove. <laughs> it is a part of your bag. It's a part of you, whether you're on a baseball field or a softball field. And I, there's nothing else to say about it other than, Mark, I, you know what? They can go to www.truletic.com to you find out more about you. Um, if they want to, to, to purchase, to buy, get yours uh, sent out to you now. Um, there's no question about it. Uh, we're all over it. And, and like we do with most of our partners, we're just going to continue to evolve and grow with the team over there as well, because like Mark said, they're always innovating. And, and like he said, right at the very first of the show, how many people are going to come on in the industry that he's in or any industry and say, I want to put myself out of business. They're going to openly say that I want to create something that's going to put me out of business, but he's doing it honestly for the right reason, passion. And you can't put any more on that. That's priceless. That's a priceless combination. So again, Mark, I can't thank you enough for coming on, sharing that insight with us, sharing your part of the team, what your mind brought to this tremendous product. And, you know, any, any last statements for uh, the audience out there that you... Uh, <laughs> You know, you know, you know, Kirk, I just, I can't thank uh, Dirt Bag enough for, for bringing us on uh, and just introducing this to, to baseball players, softball players, uh, you know, guys and girls across the board. Just protect your hands. Because the second you don't have full use of your hand, you, you, you're going to regret it and wish, wish you did. And uh, that's why we're here. That was our mission, just to protect everybody's hands and uh, enjoy a game that so many people are passionate about. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 always fun talking with you, Mark. Uh, I grow every time I, I get too. a chance to talk with you. So I'm going to keep picking that brain as many times as you'll let me. So uh, anytime, you know, that's awesome. So again, uh, Dirtbags, that's truletic.com protective batting gloves. Um, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video. You were excited about it. I hope we fulfilled what you wanted out of it and you can move forward in a confident manner and purchase those gloves for yourself personally, your sons, your daughters, or pass it on to your teams if you're a coach out there as well. Um, and again, you know what? We're just going to keep moving forward as we do here at Dirtbag Baseball Talks. So on that note, you know what time of the week it is, everybody. It's time to get up, get after it. 
and get dirty. We'll see you again here real soon.